Hello and welcome to the TOA 16 studio. My name is Dirk Marseille, head of media at totem.co and I'm here joined by Louis van Haan of Duolingo. Hi. Welcome. You? Thank you. In a couple of minutes you're going to deliver a keynote here at uh, TOA in Berlin. Uh, why did you decide to come? Uh, well, I think the, we, we looked at the uh, events in previous years and the quality of the speaker seemed really high and so I thought this was, was going to be a great event. Yeah. Hopefully it will be. Yeah. So um, you received the company Duolingo before you founded uh, CAPTCHA and ReCAPTCHA, uh, 83 million in funding in four rounds. Uh, amongst uh, one of the investors uh, uh, is uh, Union Square Ventures uh, and Kla Kleiner Perkins, uh, but also Google. Um, so this seems like a lot of money. What, what are you spending it on at the moment? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a bit of money. We're, we're spending it mainly on, on engineers. I mean, we pay, we pay the salaries of the people working on it. Uh, I mean, we're, we've grown a lot. We launched, um, we launched about four years ago and now we have over 120 million users. And so supporting this many users uh, requires quite a bit of money. <laughs> yeah, big operation yeah. out of uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is strange. It's, it's not Silicon Valley. Yeah, uh, and also you talked a bit uh, on this about uh, Quora. Um, I really recommend checking out Quora because Louis van Haan is very active there and gives lots of interesting, insightful answers about lots of the topics that you, you can be curious about. Uh, because at first, investors, Silicon Valley, it's a six-hour plane ride, so a bit difficult. Yeah, at first, uh, when we were just launching, it was not very easy to get Silicon Valley investors to, to fund us. So we got New York investors like Union Square Ventures to fund us, uh, but then eventually once we were more, more popular and established and Silicon yeah. Valley investors yeah. found it worthy enough to take a six hour plane ride to Pittsburgh. To yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Pittsburgh is also the place uh, where you uh, started your career in, in, in science uh, at, at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, so I is it an exciting place in the US to, to keep an eye on? It is. I think it's, it has a, um, a growing tech scene. Um, Google has a 600 person office there. Uh, Uber, that's where they're developing their self-driving car. Um, Facebook, that's where they're moving all their Oculus development. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's mainly because there's a lot of good technical talent. Uh, okay. So now I also understand that one of the deals of Duolingo, of course the company that you're now uh, uh, leading, was one of the first business customers uh, of yours, right? Drivers of Uber had to take uh, the Duolingo test actually to be approved to be on board. How cool is that? Yeah, that's happened um, uh, in Uber has this program in many countries where it's called Uber English, yeah. where the idea is that uh, you can order an Uber where the driver speaks English. Yeah. Uh, I, guess, I guess Americans like drivers that speak English. Yeah. Uh, and the way they prove that uh, the drivers speak English is they have to take our, our English test or, mm. or the Duolingo English test. Right. So at first it, it was a bit about also translations and um, Duolingo didn't want to go that route, so translation was not a business, so now it turns into an education business. This is also what you're passionate about, right? The future of education. So could you explain us a bit about what the future holds when it comes to education, in your opinion? Sure, there's, um, there's a really uh, famous um, educational psychology study that was done in the 1980s by a guy whose last name was Bloom. Uh, the study is called Bloom's Two Sigma Problem. He basically, they did a study and they've replicated it in many, many different areas of education. Mm -hmm. They found that uh, if you compare the academic performance of somebody who has a one-on-one -on -one human tutor versus somebody who is in a classroom, a standard classroom with 20 or 30 students, uh, the person who has a one-on-one -on -one tutor uh, performs better than 98% of the people in the classroom. So we know one-on-one -on -one tutors are better than classrooms. Uh, and it makes sense, it's because in a classroom, uh, usually the teacher is teaching to, to the median student and if you're above the median you're not learning very efficiently and if you're below the median you're not understanding very much uh, whereas the tutor adapts to you. Um, so we know how to make education better but of course uh, if we were to give a one-on-one -on -one tutor to every single student we would need as many teachers as there are students and that doesn't work so well. So what I want to do with Duolingo is I want to make it so that Duolingo is as good as a human one-on-one -on -one teacher at teaching your language. Um, we already know that Duolingo is about as good as a classroom. We did a study that shows that if you use Duolingo for 34 hours, you learn the equivalent of a one-semester university course, which usually takes a little longer than 34 hours. So I think Duolingo is about as good as a, as a classroom, but not as good as a human one-on-one -on -one tutor. So well, that's what we want. We basically are working, we're investing a lot in artificial intelligence to make sure that, that Duolingo adapts to you. 
Yeah. And will it still, I mean, you're talking about artificial intelligence, how does it combine with human uh, computation? Uh, well, the, you know, um, in, in hundreds of years, I think computers will be able to do most everything that we can do. Um, but hopefully, uh, you know, right now computers, I think, are learning from us. But eventually, we're also, I think, we're going to be spending a lot of time learning from computers. Um, so I think that that's hopefully the, the future. Okay. Uh, it, it seems uh, a, a bit awkward because you're in the middle of the business and everybody is talking about in 10 years, maybe uh, we will learn from computers. But you are actually saying as a computer expert, engineer yourself, it will take hundreds of years. Well, we just don't know. <laughs> but it, it, what it, is it dependent upon? Um, how, how fast we can make computers really uh, understand common sense, I think. You know, right now, they don't really understand common sense very much, and I think it's going to be, it's going to take a while. I mean, some very simple problems cannot yet be solved by computers, for example. Uh, if I give it an image of something, the computer sometimes, you know, I can tell you, for example, if there's a face in there, but it cannot really tell you what's happening in the image. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to take a while. Yeah. Um, so, um, looking a, a bit more into the future, uh, now Duolingo uh, is basically an app, but uh, of course, there's also lots of talks about open API, sharing with other platforms. Last investor was Google. Would it be uh, for you an option to, to share APIs with platforms like Google, maybe also Facebook and others? Yeah, uh, we're working. We're working on at least one project, um, which I'm going to talk about a little in the in the keynote, uh, where we're 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 going to be uh, uh, basically working on on some integrations, particularly with Facebook, which I guess is not Google's best friend, but. <laughs> Yeah, okay, but you have the freedom to do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah we do, we do. Yeah. I mean, as an investor, Google's uh, very, very nice. Yeah, okay. So well, could you elaborate a bit more on that? Yeah, we're working on a, basically we're working on an artificial intelligence chatbot that yeah. can help you learn a language through conversation. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of hype about chatbots lately, mm -hmm. but most of the time I think they're pretty useless. I mean, I'd rather buy a, uh, a plane ticket from an actual website rather than having to chat to somebody. Mm -hmm. But in this case, this is a chatbot to teach you conversation. Yeah. And so we're, we're working on that and hopefully we'll be able to integrate with the Facebook chatbot platform. Yeah. Uh, but I also know that like from an ethical point of view, you're very aware of what you're doing. You want to do good. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that Google and Facebook are going to the right direction when it comes to really contributing also to a better world? I think so. I'm more familiar with Google than Facebook. I mean, I've worked at Google. They've bought a couple of my companies. They've invested in us. And I think, I mean, from, from what I've been able to see, I, I spent a couple of years inside Google and also I, I, I've talked to a lot of their executives. I think they have their, their hearts mm -hmm. in the right place. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very difficult to keep the whole world happy mm -hmm. when you're such a global company and there's different cultures that have very different uh, ideas about what privacy means. And, mm -hmm. So I think it's very difficult to keep the whole, whole world happy, but I think they have the hearts in the right place. Yeah. You're an optimistic person. You don't have so much fear, right? I don't. I really don't. I mean, I, um, you know, it was very funny when we were trying to, um, when we were selling our previous company to Google, we, all of our internal talks about how we should negotiate, we did it over Google Chat. Uh, <laughs> we just trusted that they're not doing anything. I don't know if they did something or not. But I think I don't think they're. I, I think they have the right hearts at the right place. Yeah. So this is an interdisciplinary f festival. It's Berlin. It's art. It's science. It's music. It's tech, of course. Um, do you think that that will also make the world a better place by combining all these disciplines? Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that that um, it makes the world a better place. It makes you know, for us uh, as a company, we have hired a lot of people. I mean, at the beginning, we hired mainly technologists, mm -hmm. but now we hire you know, uh, well, certainly a lot of language people. But we hire people with uh, liberal arts degrees, mm -hmm. um, and I think that that creates better teams, mm. basically. Yeah. So. Could you give us like a first impression of Toa? You've been walking around for maybe a couple of minutes, but uh, what's your impression so far? Uh, well, I have never seen something where there are so many different uh, outside events. Uh, it seems, I guess, the open air means something. Uh, yeah, I mean, it seems really cool. I, I've only been here for 30, 30 minutes, but it seems really cool. Yeah, and um, do you also think that Berlin in Europe, because of the Brexit, of course, and because of all the political stuff that is going on, do you think that Berlin can actually be the capital of Europe when it comes to, to, to startups? I, I'm, I'm very impressed by the, by the startup scene here. I mean, our, one of our investors, Union Square, has a lot of uh, investments here in Berlin. I mean, um, SoundCloud, uh, OneFootball, mm -hmm. uh, at least two of them. Uh, so I, I'm very impressed with the, with the tech scene. I, I've been here for the last few days, and yeah, I, I'm very impressed. Yeah. Thank you so much, Louis von Hahn, for this interview. Thank you for joining TOA 16.